Well, how about a fully functional, operational, and the gauges work AC system right here so you can see everything in wide open. Now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have to go through the AC cycle. It's always the basics, but it gives you a better understanding when you were diagnosing and Brian and I looked at those gauge readings. This will help out. It all starts right here at the compressor. Now, the compressor is gonna put out a high pressure gas, and this is the hottest part of the system. So if I was feeling this, it would feel really, really warm. And what's gonna go on is it's gonna send that over to what's called a condenser. That's located in the front of the car. Now, in the condenser, it changes states. The refrigerant changes from a high pressure gas to a high pressure liquid. Then what it's gonna do, it's either gonna send it through, a little bit later we'll look at an orifice tube, which would be an accumulator, but this one's a receiver dryer because it's before the thermostatic expansion valve. So it goes through the receiver dryer and then it comes over to this H block, which has a thermostatic expansion valve built into it. But what does that do? It changes the pressures. So now we're going from a high pressure to a low pressure. And really cool, you can have an orifice tube as well. You may have an orifice tube system. This orifice tube will do the same thing. The difference is the thermostatic expansion valve regulates, and I'll show you, it's really precise. After that, we're gonna take the refrigerant, we're gonna take it as a low pressure, which is very, very cold, and we're gonna take it as a liquid and bring it into the evaporator. The evaporator is located inside the car. Now that evaporator is gonna blow that hot air from inside the car across it, it's gonna boil off. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna turn into a gas, so it goes from a low pressure liquid to a low pressure gas and then returns back to the compressor. Now, the component we're dealing with over on our Impala, that's this H block or thermostatic expansion valve. And I have one cut away for you right here so you can actually see it. What happens, and on the top here, you have a sensing ball. The sensing ball actually lets this thing open and close. So for example, if it's really cold in there and the evaporator's starting to get cold, this is supposed to close and stop the refrigerant flow, and then it's gonna heat up a little bit. Now, if it's hot in there, the sensing ball will allow this to open up, and it'll let the refrigerant flow through there, and it'll get the car cooler. Now, what we did, we actually sprayed it with this spray right here. And that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna spray this, and what you wanna do is you really wanna watch closely with these gauges. Now these gauges are critical. You can see on the gauges right now, this is perfect. My low side sitting there about 30, 32, my high side sitting there about 100. That's perfect, okay? It's a little cool in here, so that's good reading. Now when I spray it, watch that low side should drop a hair, why? because the thermostatic expansion valve closes. When it closes, watch the flow will also stop. This is really cool. Where are you gonna see glass tubes on an AC system except for at Tech Garage? I spray it, refrigerant flows, gauge moves, it's working. We sprayed our Impala, nothing. Check this out. There goes the gauge dropping and voila. Refrigerant flow stops, exactly what we want to see in a proper operating system. What happened? Thermostatic expansion valve slam closed. It's gonna warm up in a second here. Everything's gonna go back to working normally. Meanwhile, the temperature's regulated inside the car. Perfectly operating system.